we all have days that we feel uncreative and uninspired. It happens to all of us. One of the best things you can do is go outside for a walk. Really, art and nature are so intertwined. Being in nature is really proven to be beneficial for your health and your well being and your creativity. But if you can't go outside, go walk around the mall. I oftentimes will find inspiration from the windows of department stores and even from flyers in the elevators. My very first paper collection that I designed was based on the floor of the Cheesecake Factory in Chicago. The key is to be open to looking at the environment all around you. And sometimes, well, sometimes we just have to sit at the computer to find our inspiration. I'm sure many of you have been on Pinterest and search endlessly for ideas. We so easily get caught up in the eye candy that all of a sudden we've lost hours into our day. There is a way we can use Pinterest a little more efficiently. What I want you to do is to create a list from all of your Disney photos. You know you have photos uh, with Goofy, you know you went to this certain restaurant as your meal and you have a list of all of the Disney items that you need to scrap. I want you to go to Pinterest and in the search bar, I want you to type those in. So it will say Mickey Mouse scrapbook pages and then hit search. Now at that point, it doesn't matter what the search brings up. I just want you to go in and create that search. So after Mickey Mouse scrapbook page search, then we're gonna go and say, Remy Ratatouille scrapbook page search. And we're gonna go through five or 10 of those. You'll find over the next few weeks, Pinterest will then send those ideas directly to you. So with the algorithms that Pinterest has set up, it knows what you're looking for now. So in your um, mailbox every day, you're gonna see images of exactly those things that you had done the search for. Every time you go back to Pinterest on your home wall will be those exact kind of images that you were searching for. So it takes a little bit of planning in advance, but it really cuts out the hours and hours of getting lost in that Pinterest storm um, that it's so easy to do. So again, we're just gonna put the search into Pinterest, hit enter, do that about five times and then go on. All right, let's get started. Now the Orange Bird Spread is a class that we taught in person several months ago. So for that class, we did the right side of the spread. So the first page that we're gonna start with will be the right page. And we're gonna go back to that initial video that we shot for that in-person venue. So we'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. And then once we finish the right side of the spread, we'll come in and wrap it up by going back to the left page. Grab your kit and I'll see you in a few. How many times have you sat down to do a scrapbook page and you just keep staring at that pattern paper, at your photos, and you just have no idea where to start? Trust me, it happens to the best of us. So I'm gonna go along with this class and give you kind of my tips and tricks um, of ways that I find inspiration when I am going to design a page. The first thing I wanna to suggest to you though is make a list. Look here on this screen. This is my list. These are my must design um, in the upcoming months list. So I um, oftentimes will refer back to that so that when I'm surfing on Pinterest or at the grocery store or wherever I may be, those ideas are kind of in the back of my head so that I can, once the inspiration hits, then I can go ahead and design that page. Now I know that that's not always possible because sometimes, you know, the graduation party is next weekend, so we have to do school themed projects. So this is just something to prepare for the next time. I would suggest first thing, make a list. Once you make that list, if you go into Pinterest 
and put those ideas in. So say you want school themed pages, you want wedding themed scrapbook pages. Once you do a search in Pinterest, they will keep feeding you ideas over the next month or two. So as long as you put that into Pinterest just once, it will keep feeding you those ideas. So that's a way to like prepare ahead. All right. Say though, we need an orange bird page and we need it right now. We're going to go ahead and start putting together this page. And then as we go along, I'm going to show you the inspiration and in the design of this particular page. But let's go ahead and open up the kit. And as always, the first thing you need to do is with that background sheet there, I need you to cut off that barcode strip. So let's go ahead and cut off that barcode strip. All right, so we now we have our circle pattern paper that's going to go at the bottom there. And we have our striped paper and our orange glimmer cardstock here. So we're going to go ahead and adhere these down. And then I want to show you the inspiration for this particular design. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this orange circle paper just as our guide. So we're going to lay it flush to the bottom. And then what I need you to do is then we're going to take this striped piece and we're going to go ahead and adhere it as if it would be flush to the top of that. So make sure that your circle pattern paper is exactly flush to the bottom as it would be once we do adhere it. And we're going to go ahead and glue. I just put a brand new one in. Let's see if I can fix it here super quick. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with these. How about you? All right, so holding this in place, we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue that striped all the way across. You know, I wasn't really familiar with the orange bird until I started preparing for this class. So I didn't realize it was something from the 70s uh, that Disney has recently brought back. What a fun, cute little character that he is. When we go to it here, the orange glimmer strip, we are just going to see just a tiny bit. So if you look at my sample here, see how we just see just a little bit of that orange shimmer. So I want you to overlap our striped by, I don't know, half or so. Okay, and now we can adhere our circle pattern paper. All right, flush to the bottom there so that when all is said and done, you should be able to see your circles, uh, just a thin little strip of that orange glimmer paper and then just a little bit of your stripe paper there. My inspiration for this, so um, of course it was on my to-do list for a couple months, but when I went to Pinterest, if you take a look at the screen, when I typed in orange bird scrapbook page, there wasn't a lot of inspiration there to me. Um, there were a lot of, um, you can find like um, t-shirts and that sort of thing. And I do find inspiration in t-shirt designs, but there was nothing that really struck out um, as an inspiration for this page. So I thought orange bird, orange juice. I always say that these um, 
big food companies have paid a lot of money to their marketing department so that their packaging and their advertising is always first class, well designed. So why not find inspiration from that kind of artistry as well? So if you look back at the screen, when I type in um, orange juice flyer, then you can see um, there's all kinds of like poster ideas from current to really old orange juice commercials. And that I really found a lot of inspiration. So if you look at the screen now, this is the one that I used as the inspiration for this page. So if we put the two side by side on the screen where you see the orange juice um, clip art ad and you see our page, you will see I found the inspiration by having that like splash of orange in the upper left and the lower right corners. And I also liked how they really did like a pop of a green leaf. So if you look, we also added the green leaf in there with our die cuts. It kind of mimics um, the arms of the orange bird. So you can exactly see kind of my inspiration um, on how I came up with the idea for this page. And while we're looking at the screen here, I liked it so much. I actually scrap lifted from myself and I created a small eight by eight recipe page as shown here. And you see how I did the yellow splat instead of the orange, but never feel bad to scrap lift off yourself. If you change the theme, if you change all of the papers, it's gonna look dramatically different um, by changing up all of that. You can use almost the exact same idea and not have to constantly reinvent the wheel. So we're gonna go ahead now and we're going to um, go ahead and add our orange splats that we found the inspiration um, for the orange clip art there. So in your baggie, we have those two orange splat, kind of like someone spilled orange juice on the table. And we're gonna go ahead and glue those. Now, when you glue them, I wouldn't put any adhesive underneath these splatter parts here, just in case you want to slip photos underneath later. So I'm gonna just run my adhesive in this big ball area here and not all the way to the, to the ends. I'm gonna go ahead and run my adhesive and then go ahead and put those down. All right, so we have the smaller one there in the upper left corner and that's gonna be right flush to the edge. And then we have our one in the, in the lower right corner. Hopefully I said upper left. <laughs> All right. Now in your packet, you have a piece of blue cardstock and that's for your photo mats. So you can wait and see exactly what your photos are or you can go ahead and cut, um, cut the photos as you see them here in the sample. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them identical. Um, obviously you can wait with this step until you know what your photos are, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. My first one is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then we have a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then we have a smaller one here that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And of course, all of these measurements are also in your written instructions for the page in case you want to be able to do them exact as well. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere them. Also, another way that I often find 
that helps when I'm designing a page. So it's not necessarily inspiration, but kind of one of those when you think you're stuck in a rut, um, kind of a way to help step away from it and find those creative juices again. Maybe you're putting this together and you don't, um, don't exactly like how it's coming together. So there are two things I suggest. One is really to step away from it. And if you can step away overnight, that's ideal. That way you can come back the next day with a fresh mind. Another way, if you look here on the screen, this is often what I do. So I can't always think overnight on it because I have a deadline to meet. So maybe you have a deadline as well if you're working on a specific uh, gift or a specific showcase for an event. What I do is I place things on a page and then I take a photo of it. And then I mix it up and move them all around and I take a photo of it. And I keep doing that five or six times. I'll add something, I'll take something away, and I'll just keep rearranging. And then I will look on my phone at those individual photos. Sometimes just seeing the page from a different angle will help you find that inspiration that you need. You can say when you look at the screen, well, that works really well, or that doesn't work at all, or you thought it didn't look very good in person, but when you look on the screen, you realize that looks really, really nice, and I think that's going to work. So if you aren't able to sleep on it to give it that fresh perspective, I would def definitely suggest to take a photo, rearrange, take another photo, rearrange, that, I think that will really help if you look on your phone and see it um, or on your iPad and you can see it at a different, different perspective. So we're going to go ahead and put together our die cuts. We're going to start with the easy ones here. So we have the title, The Orange Bird. Alrighty. I didn't do any inking when it came to these pieces. I just simply glued them together. So that's all I'm going to do. You would be welcome to ink them. Um, if you wanted, you could ink like the bottom of this maybe in a navy. Or you could add your marker, Nuvo Glitter Marker Accents would be really cute with this as well. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere the two layers together. Also, um, when I say, um, when I was uh, saying earlier about finding inspiration even at the grocery store, you know, I honestly do do that. Um, I realize not everybody's mind is as warped as mine and constantly thinking of scrapbooking designs 24 seven. But if you're at, like if you're at Disney, uh, I would suggest that you take photos of things that you're not necessarily gonna scrapbook, but take a photo of the sign of the restaurant, take a photo of the cute t-shirt in, in the Disney store, um, take a, you know, take a photo of the cute um, statue that you see, because even though th those might not be photos that you're actually going to use in your scrapbook, they're photos you can use as inspiration. Um, if you look here on the screen, I did that for, uh, for this restaurant um, spread here that we did several years ago. So a client had emailed and asked if we would do a, a layout for this particular theme. And it's a place I had never been before. So it was hard for me to know what to incorporate because I had never been there. So what I do, Google of all knowledge. So I Googled photos of the actual restaurant and I used the sign and the inside design purely as the inspiration. 
So think about photos like that as well. Since we're in the digital age, it's okay to take 500 photos um, and then set up an album in your phone that's just inspirational ideas for your scrapbook pages. See a cute t-shirt, snap a photo. Um, you know, see something online, snap a photo. That way they're all in kind of one convenient location. All right, the next thing we're gonna do here is that orange. And if you look back at our, uh, our sample inspiration there, so I got the inspiration to use the orange itself from our, our orange juice clip art there. So if you notice, we have that um, kind of looks like a half up orange. And I thought that would be a really cute, little cute graphic to incorporate on our page. That, and if you know me very well, I have never done a page without a circle. So this was also a fun way to get a circle in for me. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have the two layers here. We're gonna go ahead in this really thin kind of circle silhouette, we're going to adhere that to our orange base. Super thin there. It's not exactly a circle. So it won't necessarily line up exact. That's okay though. It will line up <clears throat> close enough there. All right, for our insides here, it looks like I missed a few. We are going to do some inking here. So if you haven't done so, I need you to pull out your inks. And let's see which one I used on this one here. I used barn board. So the red color here. And when I went to ink them, if you look at our final piece here, I just wanted to accent there in the center of our half of orange. So I'm just going to take my ink pad and I am going to ink just that, that upper triangle tip there. And I'm going to do that on every piece. Now when we go to put this together, it's definitely a little bit of a puzzle. So don't worry about it being exact or perfect once we go to put all of these pieces in together. I'm just going to ink just that triangle part on every one of them. And it's just a way to really kind of draw our eye to those embellishments there in the center. And just a fun way to add dimension. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and set those aside. Now this is um, glimmer paper. So the reason why I didn't use something like a mango Mai Tai, which is a kind of a dark orange, is when you're working with the glimmer paper, it really absorbs the ink color. So you want to go just a little bit darker than you think you should when you're working with the glimmer paper. So just something to think about there. And then I am going to go ahead and lay them on first and then I will glue them down. So we kind of want so that all of our points meet in the middle. And again, it's a little bit like a puzzle and we're just not going to worry if it's not exactly a perfect fit. We are going to add an embellishment there in the center. So we will be able to cover up some of it. So I'm just going to keep moving them around. And it's going to be about like so. It is kind of a tight fit. And I think that might work. So once I have them kind of in the place that I want, then I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down. 
I always like to lay it out first. Then I glue it all down. So as I'm gluing this down, um, I was telling you the little trick about the photo. I also take a photo once I get it exactly as I want it. I'm never brave enough just to glue as I go. That's the perfectionist side of me. So once I get a page exactly as I want it, I always take a photo of it. So as I'm gluing all of the layers together, I can keep referring back to that photo. Now, sometimes we can just get it together, right? We don't have to necessarily go to that extreme and that's okay. Not everything that I'm gonna suggest to you in this class is something that everyone's going to use, but hopefully there'll be just a little something that will say, well, that idea really rings true. And that, that way of finding inspiration works for me. So I'm just gonna keep throwing out the ideas and we're gonna just hope that one sticks. Because everyone finds inspiration a little differently. I have friends who are artists and if they're kind of stuck in a rut and um, kind of need like a, that, that little spot of inspiration for their painting or their pottery, they'll just go on a long walk. They will not use their phone at all and just really pay attention to the nature around them. And they find their inspiration that way. I like to find it in technology first, and when that doesn't work, then I find it um, at a store, or at a t on a t-shirt, something like that. But it's just kind of whatever works for you. All right, now we're ready. We're gonna go ahead and put together all of our leaves. I'm gonna save our little orange guy to the very end since he has so many pieces. We're gonna go ahead and put together all of our leaves here. All right, so for these, now once upon a time, Quick Quotes had an ink called Palm Tree, which is my absolute favorite green. So that one has since been discontinued. So now we're gonna use Fields of Green, which is really darker than, um, than Palm Tree was. So because it is darker, I need a little bit of a buffer. So what I do is I use a dauber and then I daub onto the fields of green and then put it on my die cut. Now I find that this will stay pretty wet for like three or four days. So we'll see if it still has any oomph in it from when I used it a couple days ago. If not, we will go back um, to our pad here, but I am just going to go along the edge of this one here. And this is just a single layer, but look, so um, how much softer that is than the really stark edge of the fields of green. And again, I daubed this uh, several days ago and it still has enough ink that it's going to um, really produce a really pretty soft edge. And it's a great way to save the, the original ink pad itself. So I'm gonna do all of the inking and then we're gonna go back and add some accents with our Nouveau Glitter Markers. So we're using the fields of green on all the lighter shades of green here. So these are our bases, so we don't need to um, ink any of those. You're not really going to see them. And I'm just going to go along one edge of each of our lighter green leaves. Like that. And then again with this one here. So if you don't have any daubers or have never used daubers for, before, I definitely suggest that you at least have a small package of daubers 
you only want to use the, this particular dauber with that particular shade of ink. So you never really want to intermingle them. So if you don't think you're going to use them a lot, then just have enough on hand, you know, maybe six or 12 that would use with your darker colors, I would suggest for sure. All right, now we're going to go ahead and adhere our layers together. So we're going to adhere the lighter on top of the darker. And we're going to do that with both of those leaves. One more here. And again, this one here does not have a base. It's just a single layer. All right. Now, if you notice, there is a negative space inside of each of those leaves. I loved the effect of the negative space. So we save the negative space and we are actually going to use it on the page as well. I seriously find inspiration in everything. So if you look um, at our final sample here, we have this dimensional leaf here. Um, sorry, this embellishment leaf here. So it's not a die cut. It's actually one that's going to be in your little embellishment baggie. And if you look at the center of that leaf, there is a really faint vein that goes down the center. And I really wanted to accent that. So you could use a marker. Um, you could use your inks to kind of give it some dimension. I thought that it was perfect to use the insides of here. And I'm going to glue it down the center of that to really over uh, accentuate that vein that was already there. That's going to go in the center of there. So, of course, it's quite larger, so it's going to hang off both the top and the bottom. But it's going to look about like that. All right. So our last thing now is our, our little orange bird guy. And he has several, several tiny pieces. All right, I'm going to actually set the page aside here so that you can better see this fun little guy here. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out our, our orange pieces. All right, for this one, we do, are going to ink it just like we did um, with the center of our orange because remember this is a glimmer paper so you always want to go just a little bit darker than you think you would. So I'm going to go along the top of his head and then just add just that little bit of shadow there at the bottom. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. I always start with the biggest piece first. It's kind of like when I put together a puzzle, I always start with the outer edge um, because those are the, the most obvious ones to detect. So same with this. It's easiest to find out where that biggest piece goes, and then we can lay all of the smaller pieces around it. So now we're going to take out his belly. And with this belly, I used the Desert Sun. And I am going to ink the side where his belly would touch the orange. And you're welcome to add dimension to this as you want. So 
If you want, you could add some 3D foam squares to some of the pieces. You know, maybe his arms or his feet or his stomach or his beak would be really perfect. I'm going to go ahead and lay it all flush, but you are more than welcome to add as much dimension as you would like. Also, um, and when we go back to it, I'm going to add some accents to our leaves with our Nouveau glitter markers. So you could um, definitely add some accents on this little guy with your Nouveau glitter markers as well. All right, so I'm going to hold this with my tweezers and I'm going to ink both of the feet here with the desert sun. Glue it just like that, and we got one more little foot there. All right. He's starting to come to life there. All right, now these little pieces here are part of the beak. So for now, I'm just going to lay them in their place because I want the red in there before I start gluing them down. But for now, I'm just going to lay them in their place since I already have them out of their bag. So the inside of the mouth there is actually two separate pieces. And they are pretty tiny, so the best way to be able to tell which way they go is the texture side should be up. So it looks like that one's going to go there, and I'm going to just give it just a little touch of shadow here with my oak tree. So oak tree. It's one of the brand new colors by Quick Quotes. If you don't have all of the colors of Quick Quotes inks, there's usually one that you can use as a substitute. They're so, they're all so beautiful though. You could also use a mahogany on this. All right, we're gonna continue putting together our little puzzle piece here. And again, I'm using Oak Tree. mahogany would work. Barn board is just not quite dark enough though. All right, so now I think I got the beak where I would be able to adhere it. And then we got our smaller piece here. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that excess glue. All right, so now we have his arms and his arms are two leaves. All right. And I am going to ink just the bottom of them with the fields of green. And because this is a darker green cardstock, I'm just going to go direct. I'm just going to go for it here. But you could definitely use the dauber again. And then we're going to go ahead and glue his arms. Isn't he so cute? I just think he's one of the most adorable little Disney characters. All right, so now we have his two eyes. Again, always look for the texture side up and then that way you'll know the 
you have the right direction there. Now he's starting to look a little more alive. All right, and the last two pieces are his little alfalfa feathers. Does everybody remember alfalfa from the Little Rascals? All right, and I am going to just at that tip there, just give it just a little hint of color. Just at the base of each of those. All right, so we have the smaller one at the bottom and our larger one at the top. And there we go. Oh my goodness, he's just completely adorable. I just think he's so cute. All right, one last thing I forgot when we were working on the leaves. Let's go back to our leaves here. If you notice on my final sample here, I really did some extra emphasis on the inside of each of those leaves. And I did that with my Morning Moss Nouveau Glitter Marker. So I'm gonna follow the line that's already there. And I am just going to draw down the center of that leaf. And then I am just gonna kind of randomly accent the inside of this leaf. You can do as much or as little as you want here. Just a little bit, just to give it a little extra definition, give it just a hint of glimmer. You can use your markers nearly as the same way as you would your inks, but they can really get fine detail. All right, so now that we've done that, now we can go ahead and we can go ahead and glue everything onto our page here. Now, again, if I were doing this without a sample, I would just keep rearranging all of these and then take a photo or, you know, keep it in memory and then just keep rearranging until it all worked. But since we have the sample here that's already done for us, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it all just as we see on our page. So of course we're going to work with the base layers first, so anything that's on the bottom needs to be glued first. Alright, so... All right, before we adhere our orange, let's go ahead and add our embellishments in the center. If you notice in your little embellishment bag here, you have two orange sequins and an orange brad. So how in the world I came up with this idea? Since he was the orange bird, I went through my stash and found every orange embellishment that I had. And when I was putting this together, I wanted to see which ones would work and how I could use them. I thought, how fun would it be if we just added the sequins in the center, just to kind of add a little glitz and glam there in the center of our orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke a hole and then our brad is going to go through the center of the smaller one and then go ahead and take it through the larger one so that you have it so it's the brad the small sequin the larger sequin 
And then we're going to put it through the center of that orange there and open those legs on the back side. Isn't that funny how it's such a little teeny embellishment, but it just makes such a fun difference. All right, so now we can go ahead and add our adhesive here. And again, I'm just going to use the sample as my guide and just do it exact. You could use dimensional foam to adhere him. That way he would pop really, really nicely off the page, I think. So now we're going to finish up with orange and the, this is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to use my wet adhesive. And I drew the inspiration for the color from our striped paper. I want to go underneath the B here. So I was able to pull in the extra colors by coordinating with my striped paper. So that's another way to find inspiration as well. If, say, your, all of your photos have a strong green tint to them, you know, everybody has on green shirts, what you can do is you could find a striped paper that also has that green. And then whatever other color is in that stripe, you can use as accents on that page. A color wheel is also a great way to find color inspiration. So if you look at the color wheel, find your photo's predominant color, and then it's the color wheel will give you a guide of what's going to work with that particular color. All right, and one last one here. Then we'll have all of our die cuts done. So all we gotta do is finish up with our gems. All right, so the very last thing here is we have our sparkly gems. Now these aren't so bad, but if you've ever had these before and they're the really long ones and maybe they're a flourish or um, uh, maybe a, a letter or something that's a little more intricate. Now again, these aren't so bad, but I'm gonna show you a little trick what you can do with gems. So I'm gonna take my blue painter's tape. You can also take washi tape. And then I'm going to add the gem to the tape. So that way that's gonna stay in its exact shape. So again, now this one isn't so much um, a, an issue because it's smaller, but if you've ever tried working with those really big ones, to try to keep its shape is nearly impossible. So I always put it on um, blue painter's tape and then kind of loosely cut around it because it's not see-through, right? And then I'm going to lay it in its spot, push it down. Now, because it's painter's tape, it's not going to rip my paper because it's made to, take, to come off. And then there we go. And that make it so easy? Now, again, this, these are pretty tiny, so you could probably do it without the blue painter's tape, but I wanted to show you that trick in case you are ever working with the really big ones. So I'm going to go ahead and add this one here. Little touch of bling. So this little bee is flying out of this flower. 
And this little bee has been visiting our little bird here. All right, get that little adhesive residue out of his eye. There we go. You did it. So let's go ahead and get started with the second page of the spread, kind of working in reverse and going back to the left page. So you'll notice in your kit, you have quite a bit of paper um, still available and you're gonna have a lot of extras with this kit. So I can't remember since it's been so many months if I had mentioned this in the uh, when we were filming the right page. But when we teach an in-person class, we teach one side of a spread. Um, and then you, if you want to turn that into a double page spread, you can get those at the in-person retail space there immediately following class. So in that um, kind of supplementary kit for that class, we want to make sure you have lots of extra goodies in there. So you will have extra paper. So in case you wanted to uh, spread this out and make additional pages that would all coordinate together, you would have um, lots of extras to do that. So you'll notice we'll have to do a little bit of extra cutting when we put this side together um, as we give you full sheets of paper versus pre-cutting them to size. All right, so um, again, it's gonna be very similar to how we did the first page because we're using the same papers, the same background. Um, it's a little bit different of an orange bird, um, but still, still the same techniques with the same colors. So if you haven't done so, let's go ahead and cut off the barcode strip for that background sheet. Alrighty. And then once we get that barcode strip cut off, the next thing we're going to do is we have this polka dot paper here. So we need to cut down that polka dot paper. Isn't that fun? It's a, a photo play uh, paper there. All right, so we're going to cut that paper down to 11 and a half inches. So obviously, if you have that barcode strip, we need to cut off that barcode strip. And then we need to cut it down to 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to slice off that barcode and then cut that down to 11 and a half inches, 11 and a half inches, because we're going to adhere it at the bottom of our page, but we want to be able to see just a little bit of that cloud paper all the way around. All right, this paper is from Photo Play's Best Friends collection. Um, I don't know if you remember, but we created an entire 20 page, eight by eight mini album with this collection, all about uh, best friends. So cute. All right, so for the next uh, piece here, we have uh, the orange glimmer paper and we have that striped paper. You know what I always say about stripes. I love pairing stripes with all of my pages. It allows us to bring in new shades that, that maybe we wouldn't have thought of or maybe we wouldn't think would coordinate. So I love to be able to add just a, at least a touch of a stripe to every page. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're gonna cut down that orange glimmer. So again, we've given you the full sheet, but we're only gonna use a little strip of it. And that orange shimmer paper, we need to cut that down to one and a half. So one and a half. And we're gonna keep it all the way full at the 12 inch mark. So one and a half inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and adhere that to the page. And I am just gonna ever so slightly overlap that top edge of our multicolored dot paper. And then we need to cut our stripe paper. Now don't forget we want our stripes to go vertical uh, for this particular piece. So we are going to stick it in the trimmer like this and we're gonna cut off uh, that strip this way. So no need to cut off the barcode strip, we're just gonna cut right off the edge there. 
and that piece is going to be one and a quarter. One and a quarter. All right, and then we're going to adhere that piece there, which is the pumpkin pie collection from Doodlebug. <laughs> You can always tell, well, you could probably always tell an Andrea design anyway, right? I, I pretty, I have a, a pretty distinctive style. I like to change things up, but you can usually tell what's mine. But you can also tell by which papers um, are in the kit. So if you didn't even see the final design and only pulled out the pattern papers, we have Echo Park, we have Photo Play, and we have Doodlebug. Um, and th those are those are three of the main ones that I always tend to use in our uh, uh, scrapbook page kits. Some of my favorite companies. All right, obviously we have that full sheet of 12 by 12 blue cardstock that we're gonna use to cut your photo mats at the top. Um, and we can save that for a later time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put together all of our die cuts. Now there's a couple things you can do depending on how many photos you have. We could put all together, uh, put the die cuts all together, and we could just go ahead and do this, just this uh, lower left corner here. That way, if you had several photos or horizontal photos, you could use the top and then you'd have a little more space over here. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put it all together. Um, and then once you get your photos ready, you can kind of make that decision where everything is going to go. All right, let's start with those large orange die cuts. I'm gonna pull out our little orange bird. All right, I'm gonna put all of his little pieces to the side. And then we're going to pull out our oranges. Oh, I was trying so hard to keep them in order and it's just not gonna happen, is it? All right, there is one. And then here we have number two. All right, I'm gonna set this bag aside here. Okay, and just like we did um, with our first side of this spread, we are going to um, ink each little individual orange slice there. And again, I'm only inking, if you see our final piece here, I'm just inking that center section, again, kind of giving you the ombre effect. So we have um, left the natural color of the paper on the outside edge and bringing all of that really dark, vibrant color into the center. So when we ink, we're using the barn board. And I am just going to ink that point, just like we did on the first page. I'm gonna ink that point on every triangle. Don't worry about it being exact or if it's going up to the exact same point on each piece. And if it starts off a little dark, again, never fear. This is a glimmer paper, so it will dry a lot lighter than it would on the canvas. Alrighty, and now that we have the classic collection too, I'll be anxious to play with that smooth paper. I love learning new things. So it'll be fun and interesting to figure out um, um, different ways that it's going to work in our scrapbook layouts, how it's going to absorb the markers and the inks. I like, that's like my continuing ed, right? Um, some of you might be in professions where you have to take uh, 
professional development or continuing education kind of classes, you know, real estate agents, uh, teachers. There are several occupations that you have to take that continuing ed. It's kind of like my continuing ed. It's taking classes and figuring out um, all of these new techniques to kind of keep up to date. All right, we're gonna go ahead and adhere that circle rim first, and then we'll go back and we'll add in all of our little teeny orange slices. All right, let's try this again. There we go. The lights of the cameras again get so hot that it dries that ink so quickly. All right, so once we get the rim and then I'm gonna go ahead and put in all of those slices, I am going to go ahead and lay them out just because I want to make sure that we have room for all of them. And then once I kind of get them all spaced a little bit, then I'll go back and adhere them down. I always say don't stress about it. So if they don't all fit or if you run out of space, Who's ever going to know that you didn't use every one of them, right? All right, works for me. Let's go ahead and start gluing these down. I would love to see your orange bird photos. I love that Disney is doing kind of all of these fun special effects. When we were in Orlando for our in-person event in October that we do every year, it was fun to be able to take a day and go to Epcot. But I loved seeing the special effects um, on the professional shots. So we have the one of Ratatouille that is just like my favorite of ours. Um, but next time, our goal is to be able to get one of those special effects with the orange bird as well. All right. Whoops, that one's already down. And we're just going to keep going around with all of our little individual orange slices here. These are big enough too that you could use some dry adhesive. I get just so accustomed to using my Helmar glue that it's kind of my comfort zone. So use, use what's your comfort zone for this. Alrighty, one down, one to go. So we're gonna do the exact same process here. And we're going to adhere that outside rim first. And then we'll go back and we'll add all of those little individual orange slices. Whoops. Alrighty, who bought this kit just because they love the design and they had no idea what kind of photos they were going to put on it? Don't we all do that? Like I design, and I don't always design, you know, uh, personally what, what, like in a color scheme that I always like or a topic that I would necessarily scrapbook. But this one, um, 
intrigued me because he's so stinking adorable. And now just because I have created the design, it makes me want to go to Disney just to get the special effects photo or to buy some fun orange bird uh, Mickey ears. All right. The whole kit and caboodle needs to come up with some fun little animal mascot, right? How genius. Doesn't, isn't it amazing when, when people uh, develop things or, um, you know, marketing companies come up with commercial ideas and you're like, of course, why didn't I think of that? How genius. Sometimes I wish I could just have a tiny portion of the marketing team's mind that work at Disney. All right, we're getting close here. Just a few more to go. I would hate to count how many pieces total are in this kit. Because I would guess it might be nearly a couple hundred. So while the overall design might look rather simple, we all know how time consuming all of these intricate little pieces can be. All right. So now mine are uh, totally adhered, inked, adhered, and kind of ready to go for our embellishments. Again, don't sweat it if you're not up to date yet. You can just pause this video, get caught up, and then press play, and we can continue on. So I love to embellish. We all know that. So I wanted to go ahead and add that embellishment again, um, like we did on that first page. But if you go by this exact design, how I have originally designed it, you'll see that our orange bird kind of covers up a portion of one of them. So I actually only put the embellishment in the center of one of them. So if you think you're going to see both of them, maybe instead of layering both of those sequins into one, you could put a sequin in one and a sequin in the other. Um, if you're going to rearrange yours a little different, maybe you only have one photo. Just again, whatever's going to work for your photo. All right, so just like in the first one, we're going to layer those together. I'm going to go ahead and poke my circle so that it's all ready to go. Then we're going to layer those two tiny little sequins together and add the brad through the sequins, maybe. You know, I have mentioned that I decided this year I was going to be very conscious of taking care of Andrea. And it was all well and fine till about the middle of November. And now I'm on the same acrylic nails that I've had for about two and a half months. <laughs> and they're so grown out, I can't do little tedious things. <laughs> uh. All right. Just add that extra little touch in the center there. And since I'm going to go ahead and create mine just like the sample, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to adhere them both down. They are going to be 
ever so slightly, slightly more to the right ish. I just want to make sure we have our orange bird over here. All right. Um, let's go ahead and put together our leaves. All right. So this one here only has the one layer. It does in your handout look like it's two, but it is just the one. Now, palm tree has come back in stock. So if you have palm tree, that's the best color to use. It's really the perfect shade of chalking ink for our mint julep. At the time that I created this, we didn't have it. So I'm gonna go, go ahead with that that darker fields of green. And then I want to accent that score line. So again, with my morning moss marker, I'm going to go ahead and add that fun little shimmer touch onto that leaf. It always just amazes me just that one little line and how much that changes it. It kind of looks um, like there's another shade of paper being used on that little die cut. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna accent this one as well. So again, using that fields of green, just going along the top. And then I'm gonna adhere the two layers together and then just give it just a tad accent with our morning moss. All right, so putting those two layers together. And then just taking my marker and giving that a few, few little accents with our marker. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to move this page here so that we can work on our orange bird. Because we know from the last page that he has a lot of pieces. So I want to make sure you'll be able to see all of those as we're putting them together there. All right. Okay, so for this little green layer here, if you look at our final sample, really all you're going to see is the straw and you're going to see the bottom of that leaf there, which is his, his little wing. So when we go to ink, we only need to ink that little bottom portion of that leaf because that's really the only thing that we're going to, to see once we get all the layers on there. So let's go ahead and adhere that first green layer. And the reason why we gave him such a, such a dark um, base here is again, so if you look at our final design, how we have our orange bird on top of our orange uh, die cut here. So we really wanted to make sure of that differentiation and that you could still see him when it's the tone on tone, that orange on orange. So that's why we have that thin black border all the way around here. All right, no need to ink this light blue layer at all. As we're only gonna see just a tiny little bit of it when all is said and done. All right, so now we have our little bit darker blue layer and I am gonna ink that with our navy. So we have our navy quick quotes ink. I'm gonna go just along the bottom and just a little bit up that right side. Isn't that fun how like the little ice cubes are cut out of it? 
And then we're going to adhere that to the center of our cup. Cheers. Looks like he's saying cheers with his with his little soda there. All right. And then we're going to top it off with that flower. So I'm going to see the direction of that flower. All right, it has to fit, right? Bingo. All right, so for this, I'm going to do that desert sun. Something like sunset would work as well. Give that just a little toss. You could adhere this using your 3D foam if you wanted to. Perfect. Alrighty, so now we have our orange bird. Um, this orange bird's a little bit different than our first one. So putting it together is going to be, like I said, a little different than when we did it the first time. We are going to use the barn board again with um, the orange layer. Kind of going around his face there. Let's go ahead and do just a little bit down here as well. And then we'll adhere those two layers together. Alrighty, and then we can go ahead and adhere that piece to the black base. There we go. All right, and just like he has the one leaf wing there. We have the same thing on the other side. So since I gave that a little bit of highlight at the bottom, I'm going to do it again. So we're going to add just that little bit of fields of green along the bottom. And add that just like so. Don't you love when it all fits together so perfectly? All right, one last piece of green here. So we have those little feathers on the top of his head. And again, same thing, going to give a little bit of accent with the fields of green. and then adhere it on top of his head in between those little Mickey ears. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and ink all of our yellow pieces as well. And I'm sure you could guess what we're gonna use. So for all of our yellow pieces, we are going to use that Desert Sun. So we're gonna go down one side of his belly And then we're going to go along the base of his feet. One more here, and then we'll have his beak as well. And you'll notice I'm doing this rather quickly, especially when they're tiny pieces. Don't worry about it having to be exact or perfect. We're just giving a little bit of a highlight there. There we go. I love when we start adding the layers and like all of that comes together because doesn't he look so weird um, with just that orange layer in the uh, the 
eyes and the mouth make no sense at all until we start adding in all of the rest. I'm going to see if that'll slip underneath. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And then we have our two little feet. And then we have the eyes. Now you'll notice that you do have black layers of the eyes. Um, so we are going to adhere a black layer to each eye. Whoops. And then we're going to adhere the white on top. So you should have those black pieces as well um, because we wanted those eyes to stand out a little more. So if you notice, if we would have just done this, it still works. To me, the eyes didn't stand out quite enough. So that's why we have that extra little layer of black. So if you prefer it just like this, it's your page, um, but I'm going to go ahead and again, I want to adjust that little line of black all the way around. And then once I get my black layers, I will top it off with the white. All right, one more. And there you go. See, I just help it. I thought it just helped just a little bit to kind of give it a punch, especially because on my sample, it's the orange on the orange. All right, we have one more to go and then we can put the entire page together. So we need to put together the two layers of the word sunshine. Now I didn't ink this at all. It would be really fun if you wanted to do a little bit of an ombre effect and maybe take your sunset and uh, do just the bottom of this so that it kind of went from yellow to a yellowish orange. But I'm just going to go ahead and adhere these two layers together. And then the fun part of bringing these pages together by adhering all of our die cuts. All righty, and now the fun. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to adhere it just kind of like our sample here. So I'm going to lay my little guy here so I can get the position of our first little fabric flower here. There is a right or wrong to that little flower. So it looks like it's going to go kind of in this area here. And then don't forget, always keep that negative space, just like we did on the first page. We have the negative space left over from that. And we're going to add that as an accent to our embellished flower here. All right, and then I'm going to lay him back on here as a guide so that we know where our additional two leaves are going to go. I'm going to run some dry adhesive on these, I think. Kind of looks like he's like skating. He's like 
doing it as a as a skateboard there. All righty. And then you could, of course, use your 3D foam if you wanted to. That would help our little orange bird pop just a little bit more off the page. I'm going to go ahead and just put him flush to the page. And then we have our Hello Sunshine. All right, let me grab the word hello. We're in the home stretch, friends. All right, I always, again, I always love that pop of black on a pastel page. All right, the last thing we have here are our fun little gems. Now, it's best to use that uh, painter's tape technique. Since these are tiny, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere them direct as they're, they're tiny enough that they're going to stay in their, in their shape there. So for our little bee, if you notice, so on our word hello, the O ends in that heart, and then we have the tail swoop, and then I'm mimicking that swoop with that gem B. And again, we always think about the flow of the eye, that little swoop because of that that's bright, that gem catches your eye, and it automatically makes you look right up here to our photos. Then we have our last little flower, and that's so that both of our pages look like they're made to go together. We brought that embellishment over here. All right, we did it. We completed another Disney page today. So for this inspirational series, we have one more to go. So we're going to focus on up. Um, so even if you don't have any photos of Doug or, you know, of Carl, of using the up, of uh, literally, I think you could have fun and use that one figuratively. So we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we'll come back with that very final series. Thanks as always for joining me.